Great way to end the day with Coach Stoops, and he has some remarks for us. Thank you. Uh, just want to say thanks. I appreciate you all. Thanks for your patience. I know it's got to be long sitting in here for several days to listen to all of us talk about a lot of the same topics. But as I mentioned in the main stage, uh, really uh, do appreciate you in the coverage that you give Kentucky, the SEC, and uh, certainly most important, our players. And uh, there's a lot of stories to be told, and uh, you guys spend a lot of time covering them and telling their stories. I hope you enjoyed the three players that I brought with me here today because they're special young men, and hopefully you got a chance to see that. Um, so thank you. Okay. We'll start right here in the front row, Coach. Hey, Coach. Enjoyed all three. <laughs> Good to see you. A.P. Stedham, WHEP, Foley, Alabama. Yeah. So, Coach, I wanted to ask you about Will Levis and what he's meant to the program, and also what is the identity that you're seeking from your team this year? Yeah, Will has brought an awful lot. Um, uh, you know, the talent kind of speaks for itself. He's a special football player. Uh, but his competitive nature, the way he approaches the game away from the field, the way he studies, the way he competes in the weight room, he leads by example. He leads vocally. Um, he, he's the whole package. Uh, so uh, greatly appreciate Will and the work that he's doing. And he's going to have a special year. And the identity of our team won't be much different than you've seen in the last five. Uh, I, I'm, you know, I, I tried for the last nine, but really we've been uh, uh, very physical and, and uh, you know, took on the mode that I really want to be uh, the past several years. But uh, you know, that's always going to be a tough physical football team. But we have to improve in areas where we're falling short. We, we improved last year. You know, we're getting the ball down the field, creating explosive plays, changing up some things offensively, and want to continue to build on all the good things we've done and then just continue to improve in the areas where we're falling short. Coach, on your right, second row. Hey, Mark. Uh, David Kloniker with the Post and Courier, Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, with Will, um, just what have you seen from him off the field, how he interacts with his teammates, you know, when they're not at practice or something? And do you eat uh, bananas the same way he does? <laughs> no, I do not eat bananas the way he does. But he continues to play the way he, he does. Then he can eat them any way he feels like. But, uh, <laughs> but no, he's a, he's a dynamic guy. He's, um, he's full throttle, everything he does. He's a fantastic student. Uh, he's a great teammate, he's a great leader, uh, and he approaches things uh, the same way in all areas of his life, and that's why he's a success. So he's, um, you know, had a, had a very uh, dramatic impact in our program in, in a relatively short amount of time. Yes. Second row here in the aisle. Anthony Patterson with the on the voice. Coach, Will talked about the low points of last season, particularly the three-game losing streak, and my question is, from you, what were you telling him during that time to kind of coach him up and motivate him just to make sure, you know, he stays on track? Well, you, you do have to talk to guys like that because he is, he is wired. He's definitely uh, – he's, he's, he's a competitor. Any competitor uh, does not like to lose. And so, uh, you know, we just got to stay the course. You know, we, again, where are we falling short? How do we get those things addressed? With our team, we're always like that. You know, we look at things like how, how how can we approach this? You know, getting emotional about it. You know, it's too late at that point. You know, what what can we do? How can we address the issues? And how do we move forward? To your right, Coach, third row. Hey, Coach Olivia Whitmire with Channel 19 down in Huntsville, Alabama. Wanted to ask you about some of our local guys on your team, Khalil mm -hmm. Saunders, and then D Beckwith, also a guy coming from another SEC program. To yours, just what have you seen from them, and what do they bring to your team? Yeah, very excited. We need Khalil to really step up. You know, we really feel like he's a guy on the inside that we need to be a playmaker. And um, you know, he showed some flashes a year ago, and uh, we're really counting on him to continue to mature and, and to help us win some football games. And with D, we really liked him. We liked how multiple he was. I think, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a you know, physical specimen, as you know. He's a great big guy that could play a lot of different positions, very strong. And we like that about him. You know, we're going to play him on the offensive side of the ball, and we'll be multiple with him. We'll go to the third row of the aisle. Hi, Coach. Yeah. Uh, Rosie Langella from WSFA in Montgomery also asking about a local guy. Mm -hmm. uh, Cavassier Smoke, what has he brought mm -hmm. to your team and what do you want to see from him this season? Also, do you keep in contact with Liam Cohen at all? 
Yeah. Uh, Cavassier is a guy that we really hope, uh, you know, t elevates and takes it to another level. You've seen him play. He's had some really special moments. And, um, you know, he's done a really good job. And if he just continues to stay the course and matures and has that consistency that we're looking for, then, you know, he could really do some special things. Uh, so we're, we're counting on him to do that. And, yes, I still keep in touch with Liam uh, quite often and uh, very excited uh, for him and his new opportunity and, uh, you know, really appreciate the work that he did for us. He, a bit a, a quick year, but uh, he, he did a lot and helped us a lot in that one year. So always be appreciative of that and, uh, and really wish him the best. Coach on the aisle, third row. Tyler Shaw with KBTX and College Station. What makes you and Kentucky such a good fit? And then how does your program take an even the next step and go beyond 10 win season? Yeah, uh, it's been a good fit. I don't, I, 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 I don't know other than maybe, you know, I'm, I'm from Youngstown. I'm very straightforward, blue collar. I mean, nothing fancy. You all get in here and there's a lot of silver tongue guys that are you know, eloquent. And I don't mean that in a negative way, but, you know, but, but uh, you know, me, I'm very direct, very straightforward to the point. I think people in Kentucky can really appreciate that and relate to that. You know, they're hardworking, good people. And uh, I appreciate them and their support. And I'm also very honest. You know, you, you know, when, when, when I mess up, you know, you got to own it and address it and move on. And uh, it's been a great relationship. I have great respect for them and appreciation. And uh, it's, been a, it's been a very good marriage, you know, for the, for the nine years. It's not always, you know, you know, sweet, and it's never, you know, the honeymoon phase ends and all those things, you know, but uh, but I think there's a there's a mutual respect that I have, you know, for them and, and they have for our program and our players and how hard they work. And for us to take it to the next level, again, it's about us. What, you know, wh where, are we, where have we been successful? Continue to be that. And how do you benefit from that? How do you build off that? And where are we falling short? And how do you, you know, how do you move forward? Is it recruiting? Is it coaching? Is it you know a scheme? There's a lot of ways. Um, we're you know we're proud of the work we've done. If if you look at it, and somebody told me on the way here or here uh, that in Power Five teams, there's only 11 teams in the last four years that have won more games than us. So you know, but there is a, a large mountain to climb there when you got a team like Georgia at the top of the East. So uh, you got to continue to fight and grow and, and get better. And my concentration has to be on our team. You know, I have no control over anybody else in the SEC. To the left, the fourth row. Hey, Coach, uh, Justin McNelly with uh, WTBY down in Dothan, uh, Alabama. You've kind of created a pipeline over the last couple of years of your assistants leaving for a school that we uh, cover in Troy, Neil Brown, a couple of years ago, and now most recently uh, John Summerall. I uh, just want to get your thoughts on him, what he meant to your program, and what kind of coach is Troy going to get with Coach Summerall? Oh, they're getting a, you're getting a home run with John Summerall. You're getting a home run. You're getting the whole package. And uh, he's, a, he's a very dynamic guy. So that's a, it's a big loss for us, but I'm so happy uh, for him and Jenny. And... Um, you know, I know he feels at home there, and he is from that, that area. And so, uh, for him to go back there, he's very excited about it. But you're, you know, we we're gonna miss his energy. He was a great recruiter, a great football coach. He was big pitcher. You know, he's he's the whole package. And uh, and and you know, Troy's gonna benefit from that because he's a high energy guy, and and he's a relationship guy. You know, the, the big thing is in this day and age, I think people now understand like hey you know, you're you know you label you are you a players coach or whatever but but you know bottom line is is relating in relationships and being authentic and that's john and he's high energy and he'll work at it you have to invest bottom line you invest you invest yourself you invest your time you know it's just it's it's just a commitment they feel that and john will do that Coach, perception and reality are two different things. The reality is your program has turned a big corner. Is perception keeping up? Is perception heating up? Keeping up oh, with keeping reality. Up. Um, I think so. I mean, it, you know, it is what it is. I can't, uh, you know, worry about that. I want to continue to win. You know, I want, I want expectations mm -hmm. high. Mm -hmm. I want uh, people to uh, have respect for our players and our program and know uh, we're going to do things right, and we're going to play extremely hard. And uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, I respect this game, I respect this league, and the player, people we play, and and uh, it's fun competition. Front row, coach. You mentioned some of the explosive plays you're trying to add to your repertoire uh, more frequently. 
What about your wide receivers and your tight end this year? Yeah, really feel good at tight end. You know, you, you got uh, Brendan Bates, you got Keaton Upshaw coming back. Um, you know, uh, and uh, of course Isaiah Cummings. You know, had a big year a year ago, and um, and so we feel really really solid at that position. And then uh, at the wide receiver position, as I mentioned, I, I feel like we have as good a talent as we've had. You know, you, you lose a big one in Wondell. I mean, he's a hard guy to replace. You gotta re you gotta replace him with multiple people. But I feel like overall, as a group, as a unit, we're we're talented. We're young in certain areas. We've got Demarcus on one side is experienced, but we have some guys that uh, that I'm excited to watch and see them develop. Two final questions. First on the third row, and then we'll go to the back. Coach Eric Crawford from Louisville. You talked about eloquent speakers and coaches. You just had a player up here, Kenneth Horthy, talk about coming back from heart surgery and John mm -hmm. Slarman being there and helping him. Um, what does it mean to have a guy with that kind of life experience and talent uh, to go along with it, but, but just with his perspective in your program? Yeah, Kenneth is a, really a special young man. He really is. He's uh, got one of those uh, dynamic personalities, you know, and, and, um, and really is a great leader for our team. You know, he uh, was awarded the Comeback Player of the Year last year and appreciate any and all coverage that you all gave to him at that time or voted for him or however that's worth works, but um, he deserves it. You know, he's been through a very difficult time in his life, has persevered through it, and has been very consistent for us. Uh, he's there, he's worked hard every day, um, he's bought in from day one, and, uh, you know, he's impacting others now on our team. Final question in the back row to your left. Dan Peck, ESPN 106.7 in Auburn. Uh, Tayshawn Manning uh, joined the Wildcats during the offseason after uh, playing many years uh, for the Auburn Tigers offensive line. Uh, what, was, uh, what sort of went into the decision uh, to pursue uh, Tayshawn in the transfer portal, and how is he fitting in uh, with, the, uh, with the rest of the team? Yeah, very, very important get for us. Uh, we've been, you know, if we want to be a physical football team, it starts inside. You know, it's center and two guards. You know, you got to be... You got to be physical across the board, but it better start inside. And Tayshawn certainly fits the bill there. He's a big, strong guy. He's had a great attitude. He's been a wonderful addition. So uh, he was a guy we needed. Um, you know, we do have an extremely talented young player behind him, but can also play multiple positions in Jagger Burton. And, um, you know, so, but we're very excited about Tayshawn. Coach, thank you so much for your time. And thank good luck you all. This Appreciate you.